Are you looking to build your church's group ministry? Get the training and resources you need with All Access, a new plan from the Small Group Network. I'm James Browning with the Small Group Network. For $49 a month or just $4.90 a year, you get All Access to courses, workshops, coaching, and more. Plus, half off all of our in-person events, including the Lobby and Accelerate. And the best part is, All Access is a church-wide license. That means every staff member, every volunteer, and every leader at your church is included for that same price. Head over to smallgroupnetwork.com slash all access to learn more and compare plans. All access is your community unlocked. Hey, what's going on? SG Squared listener Jason Banzoff here, producer for the Group Talk Network of Podcasts. We're going to be playing some former episodes to give you new content every single week. Some of these may be from the past couple of years, but they are still relevant today. You may hear something about COVID or some other things that may have gone at that time. So don't be worried. We did not go back in time. However, uh, these are going to be great episodes for you to listen to. So make sure you tune in to SG Squared every single week. Now on to the episode. Hello, and welcome to SG Squared. Steve Bladen, Global Small Groups Pastor at Saddleback Church, pulls from his 20-plus years of small group ministry experience to encourage and equip listeners to lead more effective small group ministry. Sit back, learn, and enjoy SG Squared with Steve Gladen. So talk to us about our leadership learning today. Well, you know what? Should I pick a rant? Is that what you're saying? You want me to pick a rant? Yeah, let's get real. You know, actually, uh, in this uh, episode, we're talking about evangelism. Uh, it, it, I, I can think of a quick rant really quick because, you know, one of the things when you're in the group world long enough, you start to understand that, the, you know, people will talk about small groups. There's always catchy names way back when I first started. There were koinonia groups and they were all based on fellowship and they were pushing through that. I remember when discipleship, you know, came in really strong. Uh, I remember when the vineyard came up with a lot of serving opportunities, so group serving was, was the big thing. And then uh, missional groups, uh, you know, were, you know, were a fad that was, way, you know, way back in the last decade or maybe this decade. But I, I think my, I, if there's an irritant or a rant, uh, and I'll get into a leadership learning here in a second, but, you know, it, it's when, you know, people always say, you know, do you have missional groups? And I'm just like going, that's like asking me, do I have a missional life? I, I mean, I mean. <laughs> Good Lord. I mean, you, any group has to have a missional component. Uh, the thing I love at Saddleback is, you know, we're always trying to take the five verbs and make every group strong in them and every person strong in them. And, um, you know, it's just that point of you got to have balance in your life. You got to have balance in the group. When things become too, too centric on, you know, one single purpose, what can happen is that, you know, you got to think through, uh, you know, where, where, where are the other a- aspects of my life that I can go through? And if you're not careful, that group will turn into more of a ministry of your church and not working on discipleship because discipleship is multi-dimensional. Uh, but I think in line with this, I'll get off my rant uh, <laughs> and my irritant of, you know, sometimes when things are so specific and they're just like going, you know, do you have this? And I'm like, going, why wouldn't you have this? Um uh, but I can remember, um, you know, just talking to people about that. And so part of it is but you do want to have a missional component. Uh, you want to have evangelism. I don't care if you call it outreach, evangelism, mission, missions. Uh, you know, the, you talk to true blood mission people and they're like, you know, is it mission or is it missions? You know, there's a big difference right there. Uh, do you call it missional? I don't care what you call it. But the thing is, you got to have a part where you, you're you're helping people in your small group understand their life mission. So if I can go on some leadership learning, uh, I just want to go through four quick things. You know, I know we're going to burn up the, the time here really quick. But, you know, if you're trying to teach them that, Start to think through, okay, what's your testimony? And that's just the story of how you found Christ. So there's the your testimony part. Second thing is, there is the your life lessons. And what are those important lessons that God showed you, or if you're not trying to get too churchy on them, that, that you know, you've learned in your life? And you can talk about your life lessons. You can also talk about... Um, your your passion, your godly passions that you have. And and that is, you know, it's not about we call it shape, but how is what are the issues that God has shaped you to care about more than anything else that you can do with that to express your life mission? 
And then there's the bottom part. You got to know the good news. And that is, you know, what's the message that you want to, that you want to give out to people. And so part of what you got to think through is in your um, small group is how are you equipping your people with their life mission so that they can do uh, the very thing that you want them to do. And that is evangelism. And we're, we're focusing on this a lot because, you know, bottom line, when you look at, and that when we talk, I've talked about this before, but Jesus preamble to the great commission and the great commandment was John 17 when he was praying and he prayed the same things that he talks about in the great commission, great commandment. And, you know, when you look at those five verbs, the only one you're not going to be able to do in heaven is evangelism. Now, Derek, I've seen your lifestyle and, you know, you may be able to do it when you get to the other side, but, you know... <laughs> Me, I can't. But, you know, if you can do evangelism when you're on the other side, you know, obviously you're in a bad place. But the, the point you got to understand is there are some things we'll do in heaven, but one of them is clear that we won't do, and that's evangelize. And so you've got to be able to figure out, okay, how do I get that dialed into my groups? How do I get them to understand it? And so part of the leadership lesson is more macro focusing on, you know, how are you bringing out those four aspects uh, into their uh, their life mission, but then how do you as a small group kind of take it to that next uh, level? Good stuff. And I love how you, Steve, talk about in planning small groups with purpose on redefining evangelism uh, for your group and for your group members and how it doesn't have to be closing the deal and leading someone to Christ as amazing as that is, but it's also simple things like inviting them to church, uh, having them over for a meal, and just opening that door. Yeah, and uh, actually, uh, I think uh, Rick in his uh, in Purpose Driven Life writes a lot on this. And I think it's day thirty seven that that he talks a lot about life mission. But he's got you know four, five, six, seven chapters that are just amazing on this aspect that the everyday person can grab. So our theme is evangelism, and now for the trending topic, the meaty part of the show you've all been waiting for. <laughs> On pins and needles. Here it goes. So, Steve, talk to us about evangelism in small groups. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm just making faces at Derek Weiss talking, you know, with that. So, you know, no, but I mean, obviously, this is, you know, our trending topic is evangelism. It's going to be so important that you understand that because, you know, we talked about it at Saddleback, you know, uh, with our, our, you know, that we're talking about the Saddleback Scoop was our health assessment. And it's, it really showed us the, the deficit that people felt they were at and and how they were, were that way. And we just talked about how it's the only purpose you can't do when you get to heaven. And it's, it's important. But I think the most important thing to me is uh, I found Christ through a small group. And if you know my story, my sister attended a small group and she brought the gospel home. So it, it plays a big piece in who I am. But I think it's going to be important for all of us in the small group pe the world that as we're small group point people, you know, making sure evangelism can happen in our groups. We got to think through, OK, how do we frame that up? How do we how do we do that? And I think part of it is you got to first off start to reframe what evangelism is, uh, because so often and I was taught this when I first became a Christian, it's that you've got to figure out, you know, how do you lead someone to the Lord? And, and that's important. We talked about that in the uh, leadership learning that, you know, one of the most important things is you got to be, you know how to share the good news and how do you tell people about, you know, what's the message of the good news and how Christ does that. And there's, you know, there's the Roman road and there's the ABCs and at Saddleback, we have a base acrostic, no shock, um, <laughs> bonus points, Derek, if you can tell me the base acrostic, but don't worry about it right I now. Keep going. <laughs> keep going. Uh, but, you know, one of the things you got to do is you got to redefine evangelism. And so often it, it is that, that aspect of leading someone to Christ, nothing better than that in a small group uh, when it happens that way. But part of it is understanding that scripturally in 1 Corinthians uh, th uh, 3, 6, and 7, I think it is, it talks about, you know, some plant, some water, but it's the Lord who brings the harvest. And so often we, are, we forget, you know, in the agricultural principle, if you don't plant, you don't water, things are not happening. Things aren't growing. Crops aren't, you know, happening. You know, I was just up in Northern California and the vineyards and everything. And and if you're not making those those plants, if you're not planting them, if you're not watering them, it's just, there's no harvest. It's going to happen. And so part of what you got to think through is, okay, in, in evangelism in small groups, and I'm going to break it down even further than this, but, you know, how, how do you do that? How do you uh, structure things that are plant 
things that are water and things that, uh, you know, the, if the Lord brings the harvest, then, then you can act on. And so part of what we do is in evangelism, we're trying to say, okay, how do we make it so that it's easy for you to do? We always try to think through crawl, walk, run opportunities. And then we also think in three playgrounds in the area of evangelism. One of the playgrounds is personal. You know, uh, in our team meeting, Derek and I were talking with the team and just talking about personal evangelism. And um, part of what you got to think is, okay, personally, how am I engaging evangelism? And uh, everyone in the small group needs that accountability uh, to be able to do that. Uh, One of the things that was fascinating from our Daniel plan uh, when we introduced that to our congregation, the people who got their life healthier and ended up losing weight the best were the ones that were in small groups. Why? Because they had community that was cheering them on and saying, way to go and that way to make it happen and stuff like that. And so part of that is, you know, understanding that, you know, inside your small groups, you should be, everyone should be encouraging personal evangelism to happen. Get into that in a second. The other thing is locally, you know, locally in your community, how are you making evangelism happen? Now, a lot of churches, they call this outreach. But again, your groups can piggyback on that and make an impact in uh, doing it together so you can have the projects with that. And then globally, you know, okay, how does your small group, it, you know, jump into that global environment to make things happen? Now, one of the things we learned when we did 40 Days of Peace the first time around is we were trying to make all small groups go on the same mission trip. And what we found out was that was a train wreck because Mm -hmm. people had different passions for different parts of the planet. So the main thing was getting them on a trip. uh, But the, but the part of it is, is that we all own the principles, but our methodologies fall a little bit different. So let me break this down for you real quick as we go into personal, local, and global, and I'm going to reverse it. I'm going to go global, local, personal. So on the global side, you know, what you want to be thinking through is how your groups can engage with it. Now, you heard me talk about our peace plan. And so our run step is to have all of our small groups engaged in our peace plan in some fashion, some shape, some way. Uh, one of the things that we try to do is uh, inside that we we have crawl, walk, run steps that our groups can do that. And, you know, part of a crawl step for a group is saying, what part of the planet are you passionate about? Where is it? And for most of it, you know, uh, you know, with the um, the twenty three X and the and the ancestry dot com things like that, people are getting to know a little bit more of their roots, and people are starting to have a little bit more passion about where 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 they're from. And part of what you want to be able to do is give them to start thinking through what global opportunities can you pray about. A very crawl step is acknowledging of of an key area that's deep inside your soul. What are you burning about? What part of the planet do you want to engage on? And just praying about that and saying, okay, is there an unreached or unengaged people group in the area that I am passionate about? Then the other thing you want to start thinking through is, you know, understanding home and away teams in in the global aspect. So whatever your crawl, walk, run steps are, you want to think about, you know, not all the small groups going to go on the trip. And so who's going to stay behind? They are the home team. And who's going to go out? They are the away team. And, you know, what does the home team do? Well, it depends on the lifestyle of the group. You know, if when, when we were young in our small group and our kids were all at home, whoever was on the away team and they were out doing the missions trip, the home team, we just took care of their kids. We made sure they had their lunches packed, that they went to school, they could stay over at our places, that we'd do those pieces. Uh, you know, now when we're older, now we're making sure that their parents who they're taking care of, uh, you know, we, we, we pack their puddings and stuff like that. You know, we make sure they get to the geriatric growing, you know, you know, and I, I poke fun at it, but it's, it's a stage of life that, you know, we all can, some of us can relate to. And the thing is, but the value you've got to understand is that everybody is doing global mission when some part of the group goes on mission because the home team is just as valuable as the away team and helping them get a win on that. And then, you know, obviously the the run step is when your group is fully engaged in one of the aspects of our peace plan 
And that is, you know, are you helping to plant churches that promote ro- reconciliation? You're actively on the ground helping that happen. You're equipping servant leaders. You're assisting the poor. You're caring for the sick or you're educating the next generation. And if you go to thepeaceplan.com, you can you read more about that. But you've got to have some global interface that can engage your groups in a way, whether it's from dis acknowledging a place on the planet, uh, you know, to seeing, you know, are there unreached, un- unengaged people groups? Uh, or, you know, are we going to try and you know, engage you into the home and the way team? Uh, or is everybody involved in some aspect in the peace team? I like, Steve, how you also in your book talk about another thing that a small group can do to engage in global evangelism. Maybe if they can all go is focus on Bible translation. Yeah to a, a people group they feel called to, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, totally. And, you know, there's all kinds of uh, things on the internet that in a lot of your missions departments in the in the denominations your church are a part of, or if you go to finishing the task uh, and look that up, you can uh, understand that. So good point. Now, on the local side in, in small groups, I mean, part of what you want to be here is thinking through a little bit of the same framework, a bit, but saying, how can we engage in different areas? I'm just going to rattle off a few areas that your small group can get engaged with, which is evangelism. Uh, there can be community needs. You, and, and each one of these, you can think through what's a crawl, a walk, a run step that your small group can do. Because they're they're all can be they can go as deep as you want or stay as shallow as you want, but you might want to think of community needs. What are some things in your community that need to be done? Because you can engage as a small group with your community and you know and volunteer and help them with a project with that. What are some school needs? You know, your small group could adopt one of your kids' classrooms and say, how do we come alongside you? How do we help this out? You're bringing light into a dark world. What are some of the events that go on around in your community that that you guys can engage with? Uh, during the holidays, what are some uh, some things that are your, are, are focused uh, around, uh, again, in your community that you can say uh, our, our small group can make a difference? You might have a passion area. What is a passion area that you want to do? We have... Uh, You know, one of our, uh, you know, not just one, but multiple of our small groups, but they had passion for the Native American area uh, that is close by us. And so there's a passion need that came out of that. Uh, One of our, another just example is a, a guy was passionate about basketball. And so he would do basketball camps and try to help out with that. But there's ways you can do that. Crises. Uh, whenever there's a crisis in our in your area, both both environmentally and sociologically, those are key areas that groups can be mobilized to help out with to to show the love in a positive way. And then one last one, uh, and Derek, I'd love to get your feedback on maybe on some of these, but on one last one, you may, you can take one day trips. Uh, you know, for us, we're close to Mexico. You can do a day trip into Mexico and. And, uh, you know, do some uh, projects there. Uh, but, you know, you don't have to go out of the country to find needs where you can help on a one-day trip. So good. Speaking of day trips, uh, one of my favorite day trips that you can do with your small group as far as evangelism, and this is not even a day trip, it's a half a day trip, is going to the assisted living homes in the area. It's an amazing way where everybody in your group, from the adults to the kids, can engage in evangelism, and you show up, you you practice a couple hymns, maybe beforehand, you uh, give a call to the assisted living home, find out when a good time is to serve the residents, usually during lunch, and you sing to them a couple songs, and then you just go hang out, you listen to them, you touch them, and I've never seen one dry eye when we've taken a group to do evangelism an assisted living home, because those are people that need love and they're often so lonely. You know, well, my parents were in a small group. That's what they did that for nine years. It's funny you should bring that up. But yeah, it's a, it's a powerful thing that you can do. OK, let me touch on personal evangelism, uh, because that's probably the one that groups can engage with immediately because there's always people in your group and you can do this. One of our fun 30 uh, second exercises we do is who's who, what's the name of one unbeliever that needs to know Christ that you can build a relationship with. Uh, but, you know, you can start to think through just some circles of, that you have to see if you don't know an unbeliever, and that may be family. Uh, there could be friends uh, that you have that, that uh, you hang out with that don't know Christ. 
There could be people in the factory or the firm, you know, keeping everything to F's, but that's really your workplace. Um, with that, you know, is there place, people at your work? Is there uh, people you like do hobbies with? If you're a gym rat, are there people at the gym you should, uh, you know, find out, you know, who, who may not know Christ, uh, that you can be with them or hobbies that you may have, book clubs, things like that. Um, frequents, uh, places you go to frequently, uh, dry cleaners or the grocery store or the, your barista, things like that. Uh, and then another, we have a sixth one called the faceless, you know, people that, you know, they're just divine appointments that God brings to you that you know, they know they're not. Now, when you engage this, the, these people, you've got to think, am I planting the seed of Christ? Am I watering it or am I harvesting it? And more times than not, you're in the plant phase. Uh, or the water phase, and you've got to think through how do how do I build it? And this is where we learn the the principle of relational evangelism. And part of what we know is that those that come to know Christ are usually your friends. Your enemies never come to know Christ. And so, when you're a friend to them, you can start to build that relationship, uh, and you start to understand. You know, okay, because I know who they are and their heart behind them. I may be able to listen to the gospel. So in the planting phase, you're always thinking about how do I build a relationship with them without trying to uh, freak them out? You don't need to tell them that they're that you're a Christ follower yet. What you're trying to do is you're just trying to identify people, might be your neighborhood, might be your workplace, might be a sports club or something like that. But you're trying to make sure that, you know, the people that the sphere of influence that God has given you you need to know them well enough to know what's their spiritual temperature. I remember on a podcast uh, we did in the earlier episodes, we talked about uh, the speak acrostic of story, passion, encouragement, abilities, and knowledge that we walk through so you can build a conversation with anybody. But you've got it in the personal side. You've got to be able to say, okay, who, where are they at? If you don't know them at all, you're in the plant phase. And so you just want to get to know their name and, you know, what, what excites them and who they are and stuff like this. And then, you know, what's if, you know, if you've gotten to know them and everything, is there a way that you can water the seed a little bit by sharing with them, you know, maybe some introductory steps of, 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 of who Christ is in your life, whether that's through you talking about it, inviting them to something, giving them exposure to the gospel and things like that. Then there may be just the, the, the way that God gives you an opportunity to share Christ with people. And so you want to think about that in your small group with each and every person. Steve, on the personal evangelism subject, so cool, quick story. Uh, my wife's birthday was on leap year, so she just turned 10. He's not a pervert, you know. <laughs> when you, I, saw, I saw your social media <laughs> post, you know, dude, it was just like, oh my gosh, you know. Happy birthday to my wife who's 10 years old. It's like spooky. <laughs> Hashtag leap year. <laughs> So she had a birthday party some friends put on for her at coffee. And my wife has uh, been uh, babysitting or she's been watching kids of the, this family of some business executives. And so she's been, you know, the caretaker of these kids. Well, she's kind of built a relationship with a mother. And so long story short, her friends were throwing her a birthday kind of coffee outing for an hour. And she thought, you know what, I should probably invite um, – this mom to join, it could be a cool outreach opportunity. Mm -hmm. So she comes to the coffee, doesn't know any of these other ladies from Saddleback. And they're having a great time drinking coffee. And they start to go around the room and all say what they're thankful for, for my wife. And then my wife turns it on them and starts saying what she's thankful for to them. Awesome. And this this uh, lady that she house sits was so moved. She said, I have got to come to your church. I have got to do whatever I can in my schedule to work part-time so that I can be around you people. I've never experienced anything like this. And so it was just a cool story, and it was so unplugged. And, and she probably never imagined that would happen no. from inviting to, to coffee. Right. Now, it doesn't turn out that way every time. But the point is, is you create the environments and God brings the people because when people come to you, you don't know if their, their seed got planted a decade ago and right. it's been watered for 10 years and God's just bringing it to you for the harvest. Well, you don't know if you're the one planting the seed or you're the one watering it. But defining what evangelism means for your small groups has helped our small group people understand. You mean if I just get to know somebody, if I get to know the people in my neighborhood, I'm doing evangelism? Yes, you are. 
Evangelism is not only just leading people across the line. Evangelism is just getting to know people. So good. So that is our trending topic for this episode, evangelism, and evangelism specifically in your small groups. So take that to heart. Share this with uh, your small group. Share this with your small group hosts, uh, your leaders. Share this with anybody possible. And as always, we want to thank you guys for joining us today. If you have an idea for us or a small group question you'd like Steve to address on a future podcast, send us an email. Uh, group talk at smallgroupnetwork.com. And until next time, goodbye. Or a little bit, maybe some a little bit softer. Like, see ya. Thank you for listening to Steve Gladen on Small Groups. If you like what you've heard, make sure you subscribe to Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you get your favorite podcasts. If you want to learn more, make sure you check out smallgroupnetwork.com for more resources. Hi, it's James Browning again. I wanted to let you know that we have a big event coming out this July. We are combining our Align and Accelerate training workshops for small group point people just like you. Day one will feature Align, a training overview of small group ministry covering the big pictures and strategies of small group ministry, plus how to align it with your church's mission and vision. It's perfect for those new or returning to small group ministry. Days two and three are Accelerate, an intensive workshop that dives deep into small group strategies. You and your team will come out with a 12 to 18 month plan for your small groups. This workshop is perfect for churches who want to take their existing small group ministry to the next level. This event takes place at the Saddleback Rancho Retreat Center in beautiful San Juan Capistrano, California. Lodging and lunches are included. You have the flexibility of choosing to attend Align or Accelerate or get a discounted rate for attending both. Oh, and if you happen to be an All Access member, your whole team always gets 50% off. So we'll see you this July 11th through 13th at Align and Accelerate. For more information, go to smallgroupnetwork.com slash conferences or check it out in the show notes.